And welcome to Rob Schmidt tonight. What a spectacle this week has become. Americans are seeing just how dangerous power is. We're seeing why the founders of this country wanted to limit the size of government, limit the spread of power, why checks and balances are so important. Before the buzz over the raid at Mar-a-Lago could even subside, Trump pulled into Letitia James' office this morning for a deposition in a civil case here in New York. Allegations Trump manipulated the value of his assets, either feel? higher or lower, to his own benefit, as he was a businessman for a long time before being president, an allegation that Trump denies. But regardless, it's a charge that could be made against almost any real estate developer. But only one, of course, is being harassed by Letitia James. And it's crystal clear to see why. For those who don't know, Tish James is one of the most incompetent one-dimensional attorney generals in the country. Everybody knows this woman is a joke. Nobody takes her seriously. Democrats only pretend to respect her because she attacks Trump. She is basically a dumber version of Adam Schiff, and that's difficult to do. Tish James got her job by using a very simple gimmick, and here it is. I say one name, Donald Trump. That should motivate you. Get off your ass boat. Will you, will you sue him for us? Oh, we're going to definitely sue him. We're going to be a real pain in the ass. He's going to know my name personally. Running for attorney general because I will never be afraid to challenge this illegitimate president when our fundamental rights are at stake. We need to focus on Donald Trump and his abuses. We need to follow his money. We need to find out where he's laundered money. All of those transactions have happened here in New York City. What a pitiful, pitiful woman. Vote for me. I don't care about the law or justice or the state. I'll just endlessly harass a politician that you hate. And that's why you should vote for me while New York collapses. How is a campaign like that even legal? How does anybody even vote for that? How can you become an attorney general just by promising to attack a political enemy? Well, it's a blue state. And when one party controls the entire state politically, they, they can do pretty much anything they want. And that includes allowing a Nimrod to waste her entire term and all the state's money attacking a Republican that she and a few other politicians really hate. On Truth Social, Trump said this today at the very plush, beautiful and expensive AG's office. Nice working conditions as people are being murdered all over New York. And she spends her time and effort on trying to get Trump. Trump indicating today he pleaded the fifth, saying in a statement that he always wondered why you would plead the fifth if you had nothing to hide. He said now he knows why. This case will likely fail. In fact, this case at one point actually had a criminal component, if you didn't know, before uh, woke DA Alvin Bragg, who, by the way, is one of the most liberal district attorneys in America, refused to bring any criminal charges against Donald Trump, a move that led two partisan prosecutors to resign. They were so frustrated that they couldn't get Trump like, like Tisha James. Well, they simply didn't have a case. Do you think that's going to stop Tish James? Of course not. She campaigned on harassing Trump. It's the only thing she's competent at. It's the only thing she knows how to do. She is otherwise a fool. Do you think it matters whether what she does to Trump is legitimate? Don't be naive. Trump has to be destroyed. Ask anybody who really hates Trump what crimes he's actually committed, and they just get flabbergasted, they get frustrated, and they probably start screaming fascist right in your face. That's who we're dealing with. On MSNBC, standard Democrat Party Pravda today, their guest was Maya Wiley. Huge credibility here. A Marxist failed New York mayoral candidate, a woman who was too left-wing for New York City, lost to Eric Adams in the primary. Listen to her comments on anybody questioning the legitimacy of the raid at Mar-a-Lago. Every person out there attacking this is essentially attacking non-politicized and independent law enforcement. And that's what we have to remember. <laughs> Do not question the raid of the former president. Don't listen to the chorus of voices, including prominent Democrats, who found this week's events at Mar-a-Lago to be shocking. This is what true justice is, according to Maya Wiley. Trump must be attacked and hunted until he, he submits to Washington's will and allows the traditional power brokers that truly own Washington the return to perpetual elite power to win again. On the same day, an FBI agent on the same network, MSNBC, telling the network not to describe the nine-hour-long raid at Mar-a-Lago as a raid. 
and the network's complicity was astonishing. Watch the banner at the bottom of the screen change as we play this, and we'll watch it together. Agents, by the way, don't like the word raid. They don't like it. It sounds like it's some kind of, you know, extra judi judicial, non-legal thing. They want to say they executed a search warrant. All of that going on, meticulous searching. Um, even, you know, I, I, I've seen situations where devices, electronic devices, thumb drives, what tremendous power that is. And you're supposed to trust MSNBC as a check of the power of government. The government just told MSNBC what to do, and they did it live on television. It took 10 seconds for them to, yes, yes, government, we, we will do exactly as we are told. The media is dead. The press is dead. One of the most important parts of this country is floundering. And while Trump is endlessly harassed over Fake allegations, the blatantly corrupt Biden first family has not a care in the world. Did you see today, Hunter and Joe, happy father and son boarding a plane together, Air Force One, headed to South Carolina for another Biden vacation? The Hunter corruption story is now so real, so awash with potential felonies, even mainstream Democrats are reporting it. Even Brian Stelter at CNN is reporting this story. Do these people look worried about it as they jump on Air Force One, Hunter and Joe? Can you imagine being that blatant, that bold in the face of this investigation? The big guy, 10 percent, Bob Alinsky, all the allegations. They don't care. Of course not. They control Washington. They're Democrats. Public opinion doesn't matter. The facts don't matter for them. What do they care? Nothing trumps their power. Nothing can beat their power. And for as weak as Joe Biden is, he's untouchable in Washington, D.C. The only thing that can change that is an election. And a new poll from Trafalgar today indicating the FBI made a huge mistake on Monday. 83% of Republicans, 72% of independents now more likely to vote in the midterms after seeing the FBI's abuse of power. That's big. Americans, many of whom may have been turned off by Trump, see the D.C. swamp in action. They see what happened here. It doesn't matter who it's to. It's the action that ticks people off, and they despise that. The FBI just did Republicans and Donald Trump a huge favor, and that's what people have been saying all week, but it is true, and that poll proves it. The truth is justice is selective in Washington, D.C. We have more examples than minutes in this show to show them. Here's just a couple. The FBI lawyer who faked the document to get a FISA warrant against Carter Page, remember this person, was at the center of the entire fake investigation, all that scandal into what they did to Donald Trump. That lawyer has already been returned to good standing, according to the D.C. Bar Association. I mean, that's as swampy as it gets. He's already in good standing again. He pleaded guilty to a felony. Can you imagine? Was it the FISA warrant? I think he lied on the FISA warrant. He's already back to good standing. Why? Because lying to destroy Donald Trump is virtuous by D.C. standards. That's what you're supposed to do. Back in his day, Obama was caught hiding the source of nearly $2 million in campaign donations. He paid a fine. He moved on. Nobody cared. Wasn't a big story. But when Trump allegedly used about one twentieth that much money to allegedly pay off Stormy Daniels for an affair from 20 years ago, here was Adam Schiff's response. There's a very real prospect that uh, on the day Donald Trump leaves office, the Justice Department uh, may indict him, uh, that he may be the first president uh, in quite some time to face the real prospect of jail time. <laughs> then they threw Michael Cohen in jail for that one. A campaign finance violation. Maybe the best example, Obama's Department of Justice protecting Hillary for the exact same alleged crime they're now trying to convince you warranted a raid of a former president's home. In 2019, the now notorious Lisa Page, the frisky FBI agent who was messing around with the creep Peter Strzok, testified that the DOJ told her not to bring charges against Hillary Clinton for mishandling classified information. The DOJ said, just don't do it. And remember, Hillary was not the president like Trump was. Hillary didn't get to decide what's classified or not. So it was a way bigger deal for Hillary. But here's the transcripts. John Ratcliffe, you know him, he was at one point the acting DNI, asking, 
But when you say advice you got from the department, you're making it sound like it was the department, Department of Justice, that told you you're not going to charge gross negligence because we're the prosecutors and we're telling you we're not going to. Page interrupted at that point and said, that is correct. So the DOJ says, hey, she's mishandling classified information. She's got the servers. She's got it on her phone. She's destroying emails. She's destroying devices with hammers. We're not going to do anything about this. And don't you dare do anything about it either, Lisa Page. We know you're a loyal Democrat. You're not going to do anything. And nothing ever happened. But now they're raiding Mar-a-Lago for the same crime. Justice is supposed to be blind. It's not blind in Washington, though. It's just that justice only sees red. Justice never seems to see blue.